So I'm going to apologize first for not being Alessandra Cavara as advertised. She is indisposed and I'm standing in. And uh, despite Junus's introduction, I'm not really going to talk about all matters of postgraduate uh, qualifications. I'm going to talk about just one, which is the one I'm most familiar with, which is the program we have at the University of Oxford. Um, uh, and I'm, I don't, I can't even claim that this is representative because it's, um, I think it's quite a, a unique program, but I, it's, it's, um, open to people in, uh, the software industry, uh, and especially to women in, uh, in the software industry, broadly interpreted. Um, so you don't have to be a programmer. Um, and, uh, I'd be delighted to see, um, applications from people in BCS women, members of BCS women and, um, uh, to discuss uh, if you have any issues as well. I've got my email address on the, the bottom of the slide there. Um, I will share these slides with Junus so you can keep the email address if you want. Very happy to answer any questions. So the, the program is, it's a part-time master's program. So it's aimed for, uh, aimed at students who are uh, in full-time employment. Uh, it's a professionally oriented rather than a research oriented degree. Um, so to a first approximation, our students are all uh, in employment in the software industry uh, in a variety of roles. And the, the purpose of the program is to connect theory and practice. So connect the theory that uh, we do in the computer science department at the University of Oxford with the practice um, that, that you do in uh, in the industry, uh, in software industry. So this program has been a while for around for a while since '93. Um, it's still growing. It's it's doing well. Um, uh, the URL for the website is there, but if you Google Softeng Oxford, you'll probably find it as well. I do, but I think Google knows me and what I Google for. Um, our, so the ethos of the program is that it's it's uh, really about taking context into account. Um, so when you build any sufficiently significant software system, software piece of software, it's, it's, it is itself only part of a larger system, and that's a kind of socio-technical system rather than a purely technical one. Um, in the same way, any participant of uh, any community, um, any participant in any system, any stakeholder of the software you're building is themselves part of a larger community. And uh, you have to take this, um, this larger context into account. And what this means is that um, when you're developing a software system, any, you, you, you have technical concerns, of course, it's a technical question, but it's not only a technical question, uh, the social ones are relevant too. And in fact, they may dominate the technical issues. And um, the, our whole program is based on on the premise that you have to take this wider context into account. Um, so it's, uh, as it happens in Oxford, you can study computer science full time, and you can study software engineering um, with us part time. But you can't do computer science part time and you can't do software engineering full time. Um, uh, and I, I see that not as a, a, a weakness or an, uh, holes in our program. That's a deliberate uh, uh, design decision um, that software engineering is really about computer science in context. And within the university, we can't provide that context. Uh, we are very much dependent on the student body coming to us with that context. And uh, so then we we complement each other. Um, uh, we provide the theory, we provide the facts, we provide the academic uh, content, but this, the students provide the professional and industrial context. And it's, it's where those two meet that the, the program is about. So in that sense, it's quite similar to professional development in other professions, like in law and in medicine. Uh, you can do an undergraduate degree in law or an undergraduate degree in medicine, but that doesn't qualify you to be a, a safe solicitor or barrister or, or surgeon. Um, there's more professional training needed beyond the undergraduate degree. And, uh, and that's very much the same uh, in software engineering. Um, knowing computer science makes you, you know enough to be dangerous, but not enough to be a competent professional. 
and uh, part of the software engineering program is um, is is adding the extra bit of um, complementing it your own your own professional experience but but continuing the study that you you might have done as an undergraduate uh, but might not i'll come back to that um, uh, so the students uh, say they're they're in full-time employment typically uh, in a wide variety of roles in the software industry so they might be developers but they might be uh, designers um, system designers software designers interaction designers um, they might be consultants they might be managers and not actually do the work themselves but have people to do it for them they might be high level architects they might be testers they might be um, devops people um, they might be setting policy they might be customers for software systems uh, in, so we've had um, uh, students from the Royal Air Force who no longer write any of their own software they buy it all in but they want to be informed customers and uh, so they need to know a lot about specification and requirements and, uh, and, and testing in order to put the software providers uh, on the spot to be able to ask the right questions. So many of our students are very experienced and they um, they can come to us with decades of experience even, uh, but not necessarily any formal qualifications. Uh, the software industry being what it is, lots of uh, experienced, competent professionals have come into um, the, the discipline from elsewhere. As Andrew was saying earlier, you needn't have done a computer science undergraduate degree in order to end up being, a, um, being involved in the software industry. So, students come to us to do a master's degree, there are a variety of reasons they might do that. Some just want accreditation for their experience, they, they, they want the formal qualification. Um, some are using uh, the, the study and the formal qualification that they get as a, um, a stepping stone for advancement, maybe they're looking for promotion or maybe they're looking for a, um, a, a better job. Um, and so they're, they're interested in the, in the degree uh, for what it can provide to them in their career development. Um, some actually don't care about the degree at all. They mostly uh, come to do the study with us in order just to improve their skills. They, they might actually care very little about the, uh, the formal piece of paper that comes at the end of it and actually just enjoy and benefit from the study. And we welcome all of these. Um, so these are the various reasons why you might want to go on and do um, uh, higher well that's a continued professional development if you like um, lifelong learning uh, to continue beyond your undergraduate degree or step um, into a degree in in software engineering um, it, when it, you might not have had a, a, an earlier qualification in the same subject so we we teach a modular program um, uh, and I'll say more about the individual modules, but just to say there's a lot of them. Uh, there's more than there's more than 40 subjects. And here's a whole bunch of buzzwords. They're all on the website. I'm not going to go through them all, but we, we cover everything from programming to policy, governance, privacy, uh, computer forensics and malware and so on. Um, you can register to do a degree with us, but you can also we, we accept students on a standalone basis so they can come and take one module uh, and just try it out and maybe never come back again maybe you're just happy with that they just wanted to learn about well let's see um, uh, uh, about malware or about information governance they'll come and do a course on that and uh, and, and that's that's all they wanted and that's fine the um, the modules themselves uh, they're designed for part-time students who are professional full-time professionals um, so what we don't do is is have a lecture every tuesday and thursday afternoon at two o'clock the modules are intensive one week um, uh, class in person in oxford so we we send out some pre-study material a month in advance that might be some reading um, there's a, an intensive teaching week in oxford of lectures and practicals and discussions uh, we keep the classes small, so there's a maximum of 18 in a class. Um, so that means the classes can be very interactive. You get to know each other for during the week because you're together for the whole week, have coffees together, coffee breaks together, have lunches together. 
Um, uh, so there's some networking uh, opportunities as well. Uh, that teaching week is very intensive. And um, so part of the learning experience is the assessment that follows, uh, where you have a bit more time to stretch out. So we, we hand out um, a mini project specification and the students on the course are assessed by working on that mini project and submitting something six weeks later. Um, now those modules are, uh, go to make up two different uh, master's degrees, one in software engineering and one in software and system security, um, but drawn from the same portfolio of, of 40 plus modules in 40 plus subjects. Uh, so for each of those, for each master's degree, you take, you choose 10 modules, you attend the course, you do the mini project, you submit the assignment, and you do uh, a project and dissertation, a small, a small project and dissertation um, uh, over two to four years. So we, we, uh, the university won't let you graduate in less than two years, and uh, we give you a time limit of four years to complete this in. Although we understand that you're busy professionals and, and so there's quite a lot of flexibility for suspensions and extensions and so on too. Um, there are below the MSCs, there are there are two smaller awards, a postgraduate certificate and a postgraduate diploma, which are four and eight modules rather than 10 plus a dissertation um, as exit awards. So you, you, you maybe start with us and then decide it's not for you. You start with us and your plans change. You you move jobs, you move disciplines. Um, uh, we we provide these exit awards so you can um, leave partway through with honor if you wish. Um, the degrees are accredited. Both master's degrees are accredited by the, uh, the by BCS, and also the security uh, degree is has additional accreditation by the National Cyber Security Center (NCSC). So. Um, that's important for applying for certain kinds of jobs um, uh, in cybersecurity. Uh, the project we do, you, the students do at the end is it's a professional one, not a research oriented one, because this is a professional degree, not a research oriented one. Um, typically, it's applying the techniques that have been studied in the various modules to something that you're working on. Um, so uh you maybe you're responsible for some little widget in the middle of a big machine and uh you didn't start it you're not going to end it um you're just uh somebody who's working on it for a while it is the way it is for historical reasons and and social reasons political reasons um and maybe it's not ideally designed and you just have to uh, look after it uh you might uh, so a very typical kind of project is to to take this widget that you're responsible for and say, well, I, if I were to start again, I wouldn't end up here uh, with the benefit of hindsight. Um, here's a, a retrospective redesign of the kind of thing I'm working on. Illustrating the techniques in OO programming or uh, concurrency or security or whatever it is that you, you want to apply. Um, and you write a dissertation about it and it's the dissertation we assess. Uh, and it's actually rather a small part of the degree. It's um, we, our rule of thumb is it's one sixth of the degree. So the degree is twelve units overall, ten modules, and a kind of double module for the project and dissertation. Um, we take admissions every year, so they, it's and it will be run on the academic uh, year cycle. So we are taking applications now with a deadline in January for start in October 2023. Um, if you have two years relevant experience in a professional environment and a university level qualification in a related subject, then you are almost certainly um, uh, eligible for the course. Um, uh, but we do allow for compensation as well. So. Um, we don't require the university level qualification. In fact, we don't require any qualification. You may have left school at 16 uh, with uh, two O levels and uh, found your way into software development 30 years later and come back and do a master's degree and skip all the earlier uh, um, A levels and university undergraduate degree. That's fine. Um, 
by the time you've had 30 years of experience in a professional environment, your, under, your, your undergraduate education and your school, uh, uh, school life are pretty irrelevant. So we're quite happy to take that um, approach. Uh, and that comes as a surprise to many people thinking that you can get into the University of Oxford um, without having had a, a, an undergraduate degree from anywhere. Uh, you come and do a master's degree, but in, in our professional program, you can do that. Um, conversely, although less enthusiastically, um, we'll take people who have don't have the two years relevant experience, as long as they have a bang on topic university undergraduate degree. Um, but uh, I, I'm, I'm less enthusiastic about that because I really think we benefit uh, from the context you, you bring and you as a student need that context because we can't simulate it very well. Um, so uh, um, we, we need some persuading about uh, coming in straight from even a computer science undergraduate degree. Uh, we really want to see you with uh, relevant experience. Um, the, the courses are taught by, every course is taught by a subject expert in that material. Um, about half the subjects we teach internally um, and the other half we, um, we outsource to external specialists, uh, typically people in industry working on the, the thing where the course is about. Um, uh, largely because we don't have expertise in all the areas that we teach. So um, sometimes partly it's a capacity thing, but partly it's mostly it's a it's a, an expertise thing. So we get we bring in external specialists for the subjects that we can't cover ourselves. Um, I need to talk about costs and I have to confess that it's not a cheap program. Uh, so the the cost to to do the master's degree is 10 module fees and four annual installments of a registration fee. Um, uh, so the fees are uh, the same kind of order of magnitude as, a, as an MBA and other professional master's degrees. Um, but most of our students are uh, sponsored by uh, and the fees are paid by their employer. Uh, so mostly this isn't pay students paying out of their own pockets. Um, it's a it's a reduced fee for uh, UK students compared to everybody else. Um, and the we have a nice team that does this uh, uh, admin uh, 16 academics who are uh, dedicated to the, the to this program whose teaching is only essentially only on this program. Um, and, and we have research interests in some of the things we teach, but not not all of them. And I think that's all I wanted to say. Um, I'm uh, open to questions. <laughs>